morning, Trainiacs. Just gearing up for a little 60 minute zone two run. How long have you been around? How many times have you heard me say zone two run? I mean, we're triathletes, so turn this into a drinking game would not work out very well for anyone. Turn it into a take an energy gel game every time I say zone two run? Oh, it's an idea. An idea that I don't think is very good. Well, 11 weeks ago to the day I came back from the surgery that I got some varicose veins removed and after not running for I believe two and a half weeks did my very first run and to keep it light and easy I did just a 30 minute zone 2 run. That was not very fast. No, 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 not at all. That run 30 minutes, averaging 551 per kilometer. And at the end of it, my heart rate, I lost, lost control of it so much that I was running 615 per kilometer at the end of a 30 minute run. My heart rate had basically, it's called decoupling, basically when you lose control of it and it starts climbing more than is relative to your heart rate. Um, indicating that obviously without running for a few weeks, not very fit. Now, the last few weeks, I've been having better runs. I've been consistent running two, sometimes three times a week, and my pace has come down. So we're gonna go do this 60 minute run here. I'm gonna show you how much progress I've made in 11 weeks, and then I think probably give some of the like generalities of like how much zone two running do you need to do? How soon can you expect to see gains? How do you mix in other running to make sure that you're not just getting stale, that you're actually getting faster, that you're getting stronger, that you're not ruining your technique by just plodding along the entire way. And uh, it might be a little windy out there. Hopefully it's not too bad. So we are just 17 and a half minutes in and uh, heart rate is still like 130, average pace is 520, about 30 seconds per kilometer average faster. So that, it's kind of a, it's a good indication. Before I couldn't even hold my heart rate away from 140. So we're at the halfway point, heart rate is mid 130s and basically this is where I was at the end of that run that I told you about where I was averaging 551 per kilometer, I'm averaging 518 per kilometer and my heart rate is still in check. Like I'm not losing pace, that 518 per kilometer is up and down from there by a second or two depending on the terrain. So that's a big thing, the longer you can last without decoupling your heart rate and losing control of it, the better you're gonna be. And sometimes it's not always just a faster pace at the same heart rate. Sometimes it's being able to go longer and longer at the same heart rate and the same pace. You can see it maybe just starting to crack a little bit because I'm showing off for you. What I've been doing hasn't been a ton of running. Two, maybe three runs. One weekend run, 60 to 90 minutes, pretty much all zone two. One Wednesday run, 60 minutes. And in that, I add like a little bit of challenge to make sure that I'm still working on good form and getting stronger. And that's a 60 minute run either done at a hill, 
or I throw in like four or five 30 second bursts. Because it's not the zone two entirely that makes you faster. It's the zone two for the vast majority of it, sprinkling in some faster that is absorbed much better. I'll explain back home the science of what's going on when you mix the two. And then if I do a third run, it's 30 minutes, zone two. That's it. Of course I am swimming and biking, but there's really no strength work yet. And in total, the entire training for a week is only about eight and a half hours. So it's not like I'm getting faster just because I'm getting so much fitter. If you look at my fitness performance chart, it's sideways. It's just that committing to some proper structured run training, it works. You just have to be really patient with it. So that was a 60 minute run, 59.57. Pretty disappointed in myself for that. At an average pace of 5.19 per kilometer, 11.27 uh, kilometers. We're looking at uh, somewhere around seven miles. So that works out to 32 seconds faster per kilometer. Now I would actually speculate that this run is much faster than that other run that I told you about because the other run was only 30 minutes and my heart rate had decoupled and was climbing. So had I gone for, instead of 30 minutes, 60 in that run, I'm thinking it would have been over six minutes per kilometer average. So we're thinking 41 seconds per kilometer faster. That's pretty good, 11 weeks. Now, expecting that you're gonna do 41 seconds faster per kilometer, somewhere around 60 seconds faster per mile in 11 weeks. Maybe, maybe. A lot of people early on see really quick improvement, but one of the things that has happened is because I've been doing this for two years, it's easier to get back quicker. So it's like it doesn't really leave you for permanent, but it's like a long road to get to that. And then we take some time off it's a shorter road back each and every time you do it. All right, I wanna draw something out for you. Can you see me? Okay, so let's say that this is a cross section of looking at your leg, like if we were looking down the tube of your leg. There are all these things in here, in your muscles called mitochondria. Mitochondria are the actual energy producers of the muscles. Now, if you're only doing intense training, you are keeping the same amount of mitochondria, the same amount of energy producers in your muscles, but you are making them work a little bit better. You're refining their ability to produce more energy, which only has a certain amount of time that it can work. At some point, what you need to do with either zone one, two, or three training is you need to build more mitochondria. So this is what zones one, two, and three training are really good for. Now zone three training, people say, well, you know, that's where you build the most amount of fitness because it feels like you're working very hard, but you are able to hold it for a long amount of time. Now the problem with zone three training that you don't get in zone two training is that when you do zone three training, you are building all of these extra mitochondria, but the lactic acid in your body goes past what's called LT1, your lactate threshold one, your aerobic threshold. So you start building up more and more lactic acid that creates damage to your muscles and takes you much longer to recover. Now at zone two, you are under that lactate threshold and you're just constantly filtering out the lactate and you're not building it up. So it takes you less time to recover. 
then what happens is you've built up a similar amount of mitochondria with zone two training that you are doing with zone three training. And then when you go and do the intense training to start refining all this additional mitochondria, because you've trained under your lactate threshold, you can go harder. You're much better recovered. So you're actually going to be able to absorb that intense training that makes you faster so much better. Your mitochondria are gonna get refined much, much more because you're gonna be able to push harder, you're gonna be able to do more intervals. That combination of the two is what is the secret sauce. Most people don't have a hard time with the high intensity training. What they have a hard time with is the mitochondria building training of zone two under that lactate threshold, but that's why it's important. Now, how long is this gonna take for you? I mean, it, it's very different for everyone. In my case, I did have a little bit of help. We'll put two clips up on the screen. When I first started coming back to running, I had gained a fair bit of weight. Now, I may be down, I would guess, I don't wanna step on a scale right now because I'm kind of ashamed of it. I would guess I'm maybe down five to seven pounds from where I was at at that first run. But as you can see in the second run, I'm slightly down, but still not really at like race weight. So that little bit less weight is going to bring my heart rate down a little bit extra as it will for you. And in that first run, it was quite hot. You could see that I had short sleeve t-shirt on, today I've got long sleeve, but it wasn't like this was super cold out here. I find when I'm running at below freezing, my heart rate is even lower because the heart is sending less blood to the surface of the skin to cool itself. So a couple of things, like it varies every single day, but those are a couple of things that I had helping me keep the heart rate low here today. Now, if you're out there on the YouTubes looking for running information, well, you can go check out our book, Triathlon Running Foundations at triathlonrunningfoundations.com. It is our highest rated triathlon book out there. I think an average rating on Goodreads of 4.55. Like, it's like Harry Potter level good. But if you're not into that and you're just here killing some time, well, check out the video here or subscribe below. We put out triathlon videos every single day. And you know what? I am feeling pumped. Talk about training to be ready to train, I'm feeling like I'm kinda back. I'm getting there, I'm like getting back to old Terran. And I think by next year, when it's time to start trying to get to Kona, I'll be ready, be hungry. It's windy. Golf game is called off today. Let's go lay on the couch, later trainiacs.